Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to Hot News. How was your weekend? No, seriously. Let me know down below in the comments. What did you do? Was it exciting? Do you love life after the weekend or are you a sad pants? Let me know. That makes me a sad panda. Anyways, today's video is brought to you by our sponsors. It's display today. Yay, Dope Metal Prince, displate.com forward slash UFD tech, enter UFD as a coupon code, save 15%, Dope Metal Prince, 10 trees for every displate purchased. Words not working today, off to a great start for the week. So let's get on into the hot news and starting off first with uh, the fact that we're gonna get a fourth GPU competitor, my friends. We are currently sitting at two companies that make discrete graphics cards that people can buy. And it looks like probably by next year, we'll have four playing in the field. So you know the big names, we got AMD, we got Nvidia, Intel's coming next year, but apparently there's a Chinese vendor who's uh, about to start breaking into it. Apparently they were originally making military ca use cases for processors and now they're making discrete GPUs that are going to, at least according to what's published here, be on par with a GTX 1080. Currently their best one that they have is a GT 640, but it consumes 20% of the amount of power that uh, Nvidia's GT 640 does. So it's off to a decent start, but they're also supposed to be ramping up with their next competitor being on par with the GTX 1050 and having eight gigabytes of VRAM instead of the 1050's two gigabytes of VRAM. But then they're going for the high end PCI Express 4.0, having 16 gigabytes of HBM2, as well as 512 gigabytes per second performance with eight teraflops of compute performance, which would put it on par with the GTX 1080, as I mentioned. I believe that's also what the RX 5700 is rated at in terms of GPU processing power. And it's supposed to consume 200 watts, but for a company that hasn't ever come out with a heavy hitter GPU before, this is actually pretty respectable. Obviously, if it's a Chinese GPU, it likely will not make it to Western markets for some time and will likely just be uh, in the Chinese market for quite some time, just like how they develop their own chips and then they don't distribute them worldwide. So GTX 1080 level cards coming out soon. This could also be something that Intel is bringing us as well with their Project Z graphics cards. It wouldn't actually be all that far off to assume that we could get close to 200 to $250 for a 1080 level performance from Project Z, especially with how Navi is performing and with Intel being confident that they're gonna be competitive in the market. I, 1080 seems to be the entry level at this point. And then last week we reported in hot news about a new TU-102 chip that was found in IDA 64, indicating that there might be an RTX 2080 Ti super GPU. But now that has been proven that instead, this is going to be a custom Tesla card that's going to be going into their GeForce Now servers to provide ray tracing to people who are streaming games off of their servers. This is gonna be a custom RTX GPU that has nothing to do with consumers, but rather the consumers are gonna be the end users of the database server that streams RTX games for you. So in case you want game streaming through GeForce Now and you want it to be ray traced, well, you should be happy that this GPU exists because otherwise you would just get normal boring everyday video game playing and I mean who wants that? Speaking of people wanting things, uh, Radeon 7, not on the list of things that people actually want or things that people actually want to produce because it has been rumored that the Radeon 7 was going end of life, but now there's a few more sources quoting that they've spoken with AMD and uh, AMD saying, yeah, we're not, we're not gonna produce anymore. You can get the things that we have left, but we're not producing them, including uh, somebody from Puget Labs who makes custom computers saying Radeon 7 is 100% end of life. We confirmed that directly with AMD before we started this round of GPU testing. Leftover supply does not mean it is still being manufactured. So the reason there would be leftover supply is because it wasn't selling well. And if the behind the scenes talk of how much Radeon 7 costs to produce is any indication, it lost AMD money to even have that card out this year. So it apparently was a holdover until Navi came out, and even at that, it wasn't a very good one. So let's just all be thankful that Navi's here. You know who else is thankful though? Intel. They're thankful that AMD has brought out a good ship. Ryzen 3000, good job AMD. That's what they have to say after publishing a whole bunch of slides showing that while AMD is a good purchase, you know, if you're buying them for, I don't know, things that don't really matter, such as uh, Cinebench, who really uses that. 
That's basically Intel's argument publishing that Intel CPUs still beat AMD in actual real world scenarios, not these hypothetical made up ones that people are actually showcasing in all of their videos on the reviews of these chips. No, 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 my friends. Intel beats them in real things, okay? Like Sysmark, which uses real applications or like things that are relevant, benchmark relevancy, not a niche usage single image rendering. That's baloney, okay? You know, AMD might be good at that, but uh, Intel, hey, we're still relevant, gosh dang it. Oh, look at that, 3900X. It could beat us in the ashes of the singularity in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, whoop de doo who cares? We've got Final Fantasy 15, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all these other games that people are really excited to play, including World of Warcraft. But Intel's super proud of AMD. And they're gonna be even prouder because of a new chip that has been discovered by some database uh, people who cr crawl through them to find out what, what chips are coming out. The Ryzen 5 3500 appears to be a reality. Six cores, no simultaneous multi-threading, so just six threads. And it appears that this uh, benchmark had a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz. And if it costs anywhere in a decent price range of let's say $150, $100, probably 150, yeah, on par with the Ryzen 5 3400G, that would actually be a pretty decent chip to pick up. We'll see if it actually comes out. But you know what has come out? Windows 10 update. And it wouldn't be a proper Windows 10 update if there weren't issues. Oh, cause uh, hey, guess what? There's a new one where there's an audio stutter bug in the latest update of Windows. And uh, they, Microsoft doesn't know how to fix it just yet and they're waiting on it. And that's what you get when you fire all of your quality assessors and the general public are the people who test drive your freaking updates. Thanks, Microsoft. I always want glitching all the amazing video. It's amazing. Speaking of glitching, you know who's glitching right now? You know who's glitching right now? Right now? You know who's glitching? Netflix, because Disney had their D23 event over the weekend and there is a lot that Disney revealed for their Disney Plus service that is probably gonna make Netflix a little rest, less relevant. I mean, there was trailers for The Mandalorian that came out and oh, hello there, General Kenobi. Freaking Ewan McGregor coming back as Obi-Wan for a TV series. That's somebody nobody saw coming. That's amazing. Hello there. You put that on top of all of the Marvel and Fox properties that they now own that are gonna be on the streaming service, as well as all of the things like in official MCU, TV shows that they're making, like The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision and a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I mean, Disney Plus is really coming out with the high quality, saying that they're gonna be focusing on quality over quantity. And with their listing of programming right now, it actually seems like that's going to be the case. But Netflix, not to be content to allow Disney to have all of the spotlight, they unveiled the release date for the Breaking Bad movie which is October 11th. The only issue I have with this is that is barely enough time to do a rewatch of the series and they probably should have just postponed it a little bit so that everybody has time to binge watch it. Not everybody's like me where they can watch Netflix series at three and a half times speed with subtitles to make sure that I just blast through it. People actually need time Netflix, okay? I'm sure this is gonna be a good movie, but dang, October 11th, that means I have like a month and a half. Stop. Weird flex, but okay. You know who's not stopping? The winner of the Dota 2 championship, the TI9 finals, uh, was up against OG versus Liquid. Both people, both teams that have won in a TI before. And it turns out that uh, OG won first one to two time, but this time it was back to back. Let go. Speaking of video games, Cyberpunk 2077 is going to have a gameplay stream on August 30th where they're gonna go through 15 minutes of content, uh, roughly similar to what they did at Gamescom and what they showed to journalists. They're gonna sanitize it a bit and publish it to us people. I believe they did the same thing last year as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that in just about a few days, Friday, I believe it is. And then things I'm staying tuned for is the fact that Asus is unveiling some 4K 120 Hertz displays and they have three of them. And one's a low cost version, but I'm so dang excited for it. Coming in with a price of 900 euro, this 4K 120 Hertz display will have FreeSync 2 HDR 400 and be 43 inches. It's supposed to launch sometime towards the end of this month, early next month. I'm excited, I want one. I'm gonna have to wait to get one because South Africa import fees on monitors that big is 40%. So that's awesome. And then do you have a drone? Do you have weapons? Well, the FAA wants you to know, please don't use your drones as weapons because that could come with a fine of up to $25,000. How dare you? 
don't weaponize your drones. Sony and Yamaha, people who are best known for not doing deals with Disney and motorcycles, well, they are creating an electric self-driving cart that's supposed to be used for theme parks. Get you around. Has Sony TVs everywhere to make it like a mixed reality type environment where you can see what's on the outside on the inside and it self-drives. Yamaha, of course, not just known for motorcycles, but also pianos and a whole bunch of other electronic stuff. They do a lot of things. And then, you know, who doesn't like things? the president of the United States. He doesn't like the fact that he can't ban people on Twitter because according to at least one judge who uh, laid a ruling out on this, that would be banning his constituency from actually hearing what the president has to say, which it would it's a legal right of every US citizen to actually be able to interact with the president. And since the tweets are officially presidential record. It's like this whole complicated event. Well, he doesn't like that and he wants it to change. So he is trying to get a rehearing on it so that he can actually ban people on Twitter because those pesky trolls, they just keep trolling. And then we have, we have something that President Trump was right about. And that's we need a space force for all these damn space crimes that are happening. It appears that one of the astronauts who is on board the ISS is accused of committing a crime against her husband. Apparently, she accessed her husband's banking records, although apparently it was that they were still linked together, but supposedly she committed identity theft and got improper access to private financial records for him because they're in a separation and they're looking to divorce, but she was checking on his spending habits. It's a weird one but we need Zap Brannigan now. The alien mothership is in orbit here. If we can hit that bullseye, the rest of the dominoes will fall like a house of cards. Checkmate. And then something else that we need now and is hitting home personally, as many of you probably know, my son has a very rare genetic disorder, one of like 300 in the world who has been diagnosed. And it's because there's just a random mutation on one of his genes that just screwed up. There's a new gene editing tool out there that could be used to treat his disease as well as other diseases that are uh, in the gene sequence. It's called single homology arm donor mediated intro targeting integration or SATI for short, based off of CRISPR-Cas9 in order to do some gene editing techniques. Apparently there's been some success in lab testing with it, especially on mice. We'll have to see if this goes anywhere. I am constantly trying to make sure that uh, our son will get this type of treatment. I'm actually really hopeful that gene editing will come along so that he can have this fix before he even reaches adulthood. Because 10 years ago, we weren't even able to diagnose the disorder that he has because the technology wasn't there. But now we've been able to diagnose it and they're doing trials on other uh, related disorders that are looking very promising. So uh, it's something that means a lot to me. Also, we'll leave a link down below for an organization that we partner with, my wife and I, and we also did a charity live stream for that could potentially help his disorder. It's called Syngap. If you guys feel called to donate at all to the organization to help scientific research, they're trying to get into a research study at Stanford right now. Uh, it would mean a lot if you would contribute your money to that. Just saying. <laughs> And it would also mean a lot if you would hit the like button because this episode's over or if you got subscribed to Hot News or if you bought a disc plate for dope decor, use the link in the video description, coupon code UFD to save 15%. That's it. Bright future for my son. DNA editing, turn him into a chimera or just make him a normal human and get rid of his genetic disorder. That's what I'm going for. Hit, yeah, I'm out of here, bye. Okay, let's see if this goes anywhere.